hello, my love. Yeah, I'm so dope out excited for this. Because we, we technically did this a month ago. And now we're just like, oh, and it's interesting because I, I feel as though what we went through is dropping us right into exactly what I would love to offer for the June energy flow plan and creating some kind of uh, context around what that actually is. So your energy flow plan is a lot like a PL. And instead of it just being isolated to like the archaic cash flow, you know, it's really looking at, it, of course, your cash, but cash is just one form of energy. But your body is an energy transformer. And that's really, that's really what it is to be human. We have this divine capability of transforming energy from stored potential energy into kinetic energy that allows us to act, move, function, um, do all the things. And then also to be creative. And there's so much more to that. But, you know, we're always in an ebb and a flow. And it's, it's again, it's a balance sheet. So you really want to look at it like, okay, every day, can I go to bed in the black with my energy? And what can I do to optimize so that I'm always in the black? Because the reality is being a human in a very complex world, there are going to be situations and experiences and events that aren't in our control that may deplete us. But then if we're super keen to it, then we can go, okay, well, I made a depleting choice or I was experiencing a depleting event. Now, what can I do to replenish my reserve force so that I'm still in the plus side? Instead of what so many of us experience, and especially like as moms, as leaders stepping into mastery, it's like we're just running on red all the time, running on empty. It's not sustainable and it's not intended for the human being, right? It's not, a, it's not contentment. It's not fulfillment. Those are actually really energetic words. So, uh, so that's really what came of the energy flow plan. And then every month, right? We say month in the Gregorian calendar, but it's really lunar cycle. Humans are greatly affected by the lunar cycles. Our cells are completely in tune with these fluctuations. And so what that offers us is every lunar cycle, there's a new moon and there's a full moon. And that marks kind of like new moon to new moon is kind of one astrological way of looking at a 28 to 30 day cycle. And then we develop this calendar system, right? And then the calendar system has months that are related to zodiac signs, which is part of astrology, but it's all based so much on how we as humans respond to the energies that are available on planet earth based on how the earth is aligning to the planets in our solar system. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. It absolutely does. And I love how uh, interconnected everything is. You know, sometimes I think as human beings, we forget how much influence there is on us as we're trying to hold on to, um, to the control. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that you said that word. Oh my gosh. Because it's exactly what this, this kind of like energy is about. And we, you and I have been like personally and professionally going through these experiences as have some of our clients in very, very powerful, very transformative ways. But yeah, it's, oh, I love this so much. Oh gosh, so good. So control, control is a funny thing. It is actually in our human nature to, 
to kind of want to control things, to want to control our circumstances, outcomes, environments, relationships, because it stems from, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, from a need to feel secure, to feel safe. And one of my spiritual teachers always offers up the deep teaching that there's no such thing as security. So if that's, if that's true, which I believe that it is, then, and as a physiologist, it's really an interesting question because then you just tap right into well, where do you live? You live inside this space you, we call a human body. And the human body is a self-organizing organism. And it has absolutely everything that you require in order to carry out whatever your soul's destiny is. It's already laid out for you. In your DNA, in your genetic coding that's unique to you, mapped out through your natal chart on the exact moment you were born, it's fascinating, right? So where I would love to offer, and especially coming into June, because there's a lot in June, we'll say Gemini. So tomorrow is the new moon in Gemini, and it is also a solar eclipse. So we've got them going off, I think within an hour of each other, around 5.30 a.m. I believe the solar eclipse is coming in about 6 40 a.m is the new moon coming in and so it's perfect timing for us to offer this monthly energy flow plan and it is really about you know not having to be in you can't control like the planets are moving right so what can we do we can actually be very sovereign we can come in into commands i love the word command because it's different than control but what you can do is you can command things based on being really intelligent around well, what's actually here for me. So we've got new moon. Every new moon is about newness, freshness. What are you setting intentions on now this specific new moon? is bringing to light Gemini. And it's really like, you may feel like you have these intentions, but it's elevating your intention. You're getting really, really specific and then allowing yourself kind of the grace of being patient. Which looks like we're having some technical issues. Uh, it would be so fitting, speaking of planets, <laughs> Mercury is still retrograding and typically uh, any technical issues are uh, associated with retrograding mercury. So we'll see. Hey, hey. So we, of course, are just playing with mercury, with mercury retrograde a little bit. And a lot of other planets giving us some energy to work with here. So we'll just drop right into, again, just, you know, I'm not an astrologer. I do want to make that clear. I've studied astrology as a physiologist for, I don't know, my entire life, it feels like. And I am just a humble student. And I have uh, worked with astrologers over the years. I listened to some incredibly wise astrologers. And Sarah and I, you know, we have had our own astrology sessions with a divine astrologer. Um, so when I speak to the solar system and energy, I really come from the place of, I'm a physiologist, you know, that is my mastery and helping humans wield all the energy to have available to them, not just within their 10 body system, within their anatomy, but also within the cosmos, because again, it's an interdependent relationship. And that's really where I see we can develop so much more strength, stamina, and we can really come into um, the fullest potential. That's fulfillment. 
so that, so I offer it from that place, right? So we're talking about June. We're talking about this Gemini experience, and then we're talking about what the planets are doing right now. Where what are what's transiting? What's happening right now? And we've got this new moon coming in tomorrow morning, and we've got a solar eclipse. So, like, what does that mean to be a human being who's sophisticated enough to understand that these planetary experiences affect us on a cellular level. So what I love to do with, with energy flow plan is looking at every lunar cycle and saying, okay, like what's here for us? And then simply intuit what gets to be focused on. And so, so what we're offering, Sarah and I, through Elite Mystique Agency, is just giving you our energy flow plan and offering it to you as a guidepost, as a gift to play with for yourself. But you can start to intuit these things on your own as well. So what I intuit, what I feel into is, okay, what is the body we're going to focus on this month? So according to yogic science, we have 10 bodies. We have an, basically an energetic anatomy that includes your aura, your arc line, your radiant body, your soul body, your subtle body. And then we have our mental bodies, to which we have three. We have a positive mind, we have a neutral mind, we have a negative mind. They all work together. And of course, then we have our physical body. And then we have our pranic body. So the 10 body system is dynamic and there's energy specific to each of these and anatomical parts, if you will. It's like the same thing as like your, your cardiovascular system is responsible for very specific functions. Your digestive system is responsible for very specific functions. It's the same with your energetic anatomy. And then you have... In addition to that, again, according to uh, more of the, the mystical principles, and mysticism, magic, science, it's all the same. It's just an opportunity for us as humans to exalt ourselves and just really have fun while we're in this beautiful form. So we've got this chakra system. So technically we have multiple chakras. Most people work with that are familiar with it with a seven chakra system. Uh, in the yogic lineage I follow, we work more with eight and beyond, but we will just talk about, okay, seven. So what chakra are we going to focus on for this lunar cycle? And then we have our tattvas, our five elements, right? This is about not just within, but without, right? Within you, the five elements and how you work with them. And for me, in my direct experience, again, as a physiologist, I love to play with the tattvas in relation to the five senses. And it's very, very powerful. So there's an opportunity to look at, okay, what elements are you focusing on this month? Fire, air earth, ether, like what are you tapping into to really, again, this is about, can you go to bed in the black, right? And you've got a whole lot to work with. We got a lot of stuff to play with. So I know for Sarah and I, it is very helpful to focus in on just a few key things. And so I always just open myself up energetically to receive whatever the divine wants to drop in as far as I just ask, like, hey, universe, divine, mother, nature, where can we be guided this lunar cycle? Where do you feel we require some attention so that we can be the most energized and we can maximize our strength and we can really serve the planet in accordance with our priorities and with our destiny's um, path. So 
I asked that. I meditate on it. Sometimes it drops in really quickly. It did this lunar cycle. And so for Elite Mystique Agency, as to which it's its own entity, our company, your company is your own entity. You keep it company with your service to it. And Sarah and I are looking at the crown chakra, the subtle body, and the fire element. So much fun, right? So any questions, Sarah? I can't wait to dive deeper into each one of those elements. And especially from the perspective of how a person on the other side of this line listening can put it into, um, can layer in into their daily routines, the habits that uh, they can then develop to exalt themselves. Fire. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it's fiery season, right? And it's, it's, it's hot here in the North. It's summer. It's going to be summer. We're entering the summer solstice in this, in this lunar cycle. It's so exciting. It's personally my favorite time of year. Also, it's a solar eclipse tomorrow. And, you know, before that, like really, eclipses can affect the human body. Again, according to some scientists, up to six months to a year prior, depending on where your natal chart is and if it's like aligning with specific degrees. Um, you can really, really feel them for a long time. But like, 10 days to a week prior to the solar eclipse is when you really want to, you know, start kind of noticing what's, what's happening around you and in you. And so I find this really cool because I, you know, created our June energy flow plan on June 1st and tomorrow's the 10th, right? So fire, as we're coming into the solar eclipse, like, what is that? What does that mean? What does that feel like in our bodies? You know, and, and what I've been noticing is this deep relationship to my hearing. What are we, what are we, and, and this came up for Sarah and I so deeply. So of the five senses, fire and hearing. Well, Sarah and I, even just yesterday, were like, wow, are we just contributing a lot of fucking noise to what's already a really really, really noisy digital marketplace. It's so noisy. The people are so overloaded. And I know that for months now, I have been just craving silence and stillness and, and just really like, ah, almost like, I just want everybody to shut up. <laughs> and I feel as though fire can offer up the opportunity to just burn the noise, burn out the things that are just not relevant to you and you feeling amazing and vital and fulfilled, right? Energizing. And use that fire to just burn it out and become you know, fire gives us focus, right? And it's, it's passion. It's like, be more discerning about who you are, what you're passionate about, and then tune your ears into that frequency and that frequency alone. And just on a side note, it really is then, it, I love how it just is also divinely related, as you said, Sarah, like, because... The subtle body, the subtle body offers us an energy of calm, it's calm. We get subtle, we get quiet, we tune in. And it's coming from a place of developing mastery, right? When you focus in on a skill that you feel passionate about, you create a, literally a hormonal expression a hormonal experience of calm and the body can only feel basically four sensations calm excited pleasant unpleasant 
So when you are, think about it, working on something you love and you are just like timeless in it and it's hard, it challenges you, but you know that you're learning something that is here for you to learn. Like it is just like, boom, it's a connection. A sense of just calm, pleasant, ah, just washes over your system. And that's subtle body. So it's like use, use fire, right? How do you use fire? Light, you know, light a candle and set your intentions in this new moon over the candle and elevate those intentions. Again, this isn't necessarily about creating new intentions. This is looking at what you already know you want. Like you're in the situation you're in, you know what you want to elevate. And then it's simply like, okay, now do I have all of the pieces to get from where I am to where I want to go? Mm -hmm. And then just use that fire to say, let's burn out what, what I don't need. Burn out the noise and illuminate my passion. And then it beautifully flows into that delightful crown chakra. Because what is the crown chakra? The crown chakra is literally your intuition, your connection to your highest self. I lately have been practicing the vision of the highest self as my future self. So asking my future self, who's creating a legacy, what would she want to tell me today from that future time stream? And just really, again, tuning in and listening. So You've burned out the noise. You're getting super subtle in what you feel passionately about. You're developing mastery around that, which gives you this sense of calm, which actually is connected then to the crown chakra opening more. And you're able to listen more with more discernment to really see what's coming in that is there specifically for you. So you can manifest it like boom, boom. All right. So there we go. That is just a, an example of how we roll with an energy flow plan. And now you've got everything else going on for you in your life as an entrepreneur, as a mom, as a business owner, as a leader, as an athlete, whatever. But you've also now got your energy flow plan on lock. And yes, that energy flow plan, if I may chime in, um, is the thing that separates grinding and hustling and just pushing through and hoping for the best compared to or versus or um, instead of uh, this literally flow. You know, Diana and I have been talking about so often how the word ease in itself doesn't quite excite us. We embrace timelessness and we embrace pressure, but both in the context of a flow. So with this flow chart, what we can do then to take it even a step further when it comes to the actual quantum strategies that are in alignment, we then take a look what's in your docket for this month. What is the Northern star, you know, in relation to where is it you're going? What is your vision? What is your Dharma? Um, what is your energetic vibration? And we literally skip the middle steps, all the things that were tripping you over all the friction points that were consuming your energy and your time and your focus. So, just through that you can then enjoy way more time way more freedom and uh, have much more energy to really pour into things that matter to you the most whether it's in business or at home or with family and most importantly it can be both it gets to be all of it Mm -hmm. (laughs) absolutely yep that that's the pragmatic piece to how you, you know, we're here wielding the energy and how do we, how do we then channel it into, well, what is, what does my daily look like? And that way you're never, ever a bitch to your schedule. You know, you create your schedule based on your physiology and your relationship with the, the cosmos. Cause it's like, this is, we're, we're inhabiting planet earth. 
and we're here in this 3D realm, yet we are multidimensional creatures. Exactly. And leaders these days stepping into mastery really require the fitness to be able to straddle this toggle between them, leap between them, because, you know, they're there and we are a bridge in a sense for many others looking, looking to have a, you know, again, an elevated experience. So good. I feel like, like lots of closure here, like very, very direct because that's how we roll. And, you know, if you're somebody who's like really called to learn more about this and, and also if you are really seeking more customized guidance, I mean, this is what we do at Elite Mystique Agency. It is really about creating a customized experience, you know, intimate, sacred experience for you. So Sarah and I, we, we love to play. We love to have fun. And so we've been dancing around the idea. Like we both love dressing up and it's been a damn long time since we've done it. And we both grew up as athletes and we've attended many fundraisers here and there over the years. And, you know, awards, dinners and ceremonies. There's a lot of pomp and circumstance in the athletic world. And, but something that feels so romantic to both of us is, I like to say it the way Sarah says it because she, here in the States, has an accent. She doesn't think she has an accent, but we in the States say she does. And she says gala. And we would normally say perhaps gala. But when I heard her say gala, I just melted. I was like, well, now I fell in love with that even more. (laughs) So we're like, okay, well, enough of this kind of like, everything on hold, no reason to dress up. I'm zooming around in my pajamas all day long, literally. And let's have ourselves a gala. And so we're still building what that gets to look like because we're in play too. We're creating, we're going to use this beautiful solar eclipse and new moon tomorrow to, we already have it on our schedule for visionary time. It's also Jupiter day. And Jupiter is abundance and, you know, planetary days of the week play a part in this too. So Sarah and I will be playing with this idea more, perhaps celebrating our birthdays. Why not? Hers is the end of June, mine is the end of July. So somewhere in that time frame, we're going to create a virtual gala. And if you're interested in being invited, it's going to be a personal invite thing. So send us a message and we will send you an invite if this is something we feel is aligned for you because we don't want you to waste your time. Um, and basically what we were saying yesterday, Sarah, what, sta- what, what happens at the gala stays in the gala. Exactly. It's like a secret society of fun, right? It's a secret exactly. society of fun where we're just going to have a celebratory experience. Again, Sarah and I, we basically grew up in the athletic world and every athlete, I think one big common denominator is every athlete. We just love a damn good celebration. We like to celebrate. We like to celebrate ourselves probably more than many humans do. And, but it's a really important lost art. The, the celebration, Sarah reminded me of that the other day because I was like, wow, I, I accomplished something that was hard. Like you said, like, there's ease in the effort because when you're doing something challenging that's aligned with your destiny's path, it is hard, but it's easy because it's yours, yours, your soul, your truth. And I did something that was really hard and I almost forgot to celebrate. And she was like, uh, can you go take a victory lap? And I was like, oh yeah, track athlete. Oh my gosh. Was oh, victory lap. Oh my God. And I just, I did it. And I, and I just repatterned my biology. Like I just feel exalted from that. So we're, we're going to move on that fun energy, create a celebration. If you want to be invited, let us know. We'll, we'll hit you up when we know exactly what it looks like. And perhaps we can end with that. Any, any other last divine words, my sister girl? 
how would oh my gosh you know me if i start talking right now we're good for another three days of channeling and so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, we both love to talk, which is awesome. Exactly. So I will honor the uh, attention and the time of everybody who is here with us, present and not present in one way or the other. Um, and just want to say thank you, Diane, and thank you to the listener on the other side of um, whatever technical device. Whatever transmission. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Transmitting this to you. And uh, just echoing. Quantum, um, baby. <laughs> quantum that's it um we're here we're here to support you we're here to elevate you we're here to exalt you and uh it's all fun it's amazing and it's intimate and like the said what stays in uh the gala not just the gala the gala the gala, the gala. The gala. The gala. The gala. <laughs> also uh that is one of the things that we really pride ourselves in in the creating a sacred space right um that you're not going to be hearing about the details posted all over social media because it is a sacred space so if mm -hmm. this calls to you if you know it in your heart if you're curious let us know and we'll go from there you know where to find yep. us Thank you. That. and uh, sending you so much love day and you're in maryland right now i'm here in the lower hudson valley it is gorgeous hot uh sunny <laughs> so i'm sending it on a sunshine all good. Love, love. Bye. Bye.